YouTube, what is going on, man? It's your boy Flash and Only Man back at it again with another video. How y'all boys rocking, bullying, cooling, and school on the bit, man? Hey, man, say me, yeah, man. Hey, now y'all gotta realize something, right? Within the last couple weeks, we have gained viewership and also subscriptions with NASCAR fans. With me doing the live streams of the NASCAR and stuff like that, over the last couple weeks, we have gained viewerships with the NASCAR fans. And if you don't know, I'm a huge NASCAR fan myself. Been a NASCAR fan since 1998. I got videos talking about that on my page. I know I got a whole bunch of videos and stuff like that, but just type in Flash and Only 773 NASCAR or something like that. Something will pop up. You feel me? But I must talk about the 2021 Daytona 500, which just finished like literally like five minutes ago. And I must say, Shout out and congratulations to Michael McDowell. He won his first race, first 500. Like, like how how much better can you get? Your first win, your first race that you win is the Daytona 500. Now, for all the people that don't know about NASCAR that subscribe to my page, the Daytona 500 is pretty much the Super Bowl of NASCAR. It's pretty much Game Seven of the NBA Finals. You feel me? It's pretty much the Stanley Cup. It's pretty much you know saying the World Series in one race that's what the daytona 500 is now in other sports they do their most biggest pristine whatever event at the end of the season and nascar we do it at the beginning and at the end of the season we have the champion you know what i'm saying but the biggest race to win is the daytona 500 that's the race if you can't be no champion if you can't win you know 20 out of 36 races at least you want to say that hey I won the Daytona 500. That is the most pristine event right there. Now, I must say, man, at first, I thought I was going to have to title this video, you know what I'm saying, the, the Denny Hamlin 500 because I, I thought Denny Hamlin was going to win again. You know what I'm saying? Like, if y'all don't know, man, Denny Hamlin has won the last three out of, what, four Daytona 500s? You know what I'm saying? Like, Dean Hammer's just been going crazy at Daytona. The man down there lit, like, what, over 100 laps tonight, I want to say? Like, he's been unstoppable at Daytona, man. Like, you got to realize something. When it comes to restricted plate racing, and since it's such of a crapshoot where anybody can win, because restricted plate racing, and what I mean by restricted plate racing is the cars are restricted with airflow going to the engine with a carburetor restricted plate. You know what I'm saying? So all the horsepower is bagged down. You know what I'm saying? So everybody for the most part, that's why you see them all nose and tail bumper to bumper like that because their speed is restricted. If these cars was wide open at this track in Talladega, they'd be easy doing like 230, 240, no problem. You feel me? But they're restricted down to 190 and 195 and so on and so forth. Anybody has a chance and opportunity to win the race. So for Denny Hamlin to be such of a dominant person to lead laps and win, that's just show you how much of a grasp that he got on the restricted play package in Daytona and Talladega as well. You know, he, he's been doing his thing at Talladega too as well. I really thought that he was going to win this bad boy. I mean, it's that pit stop, that pit stop, that pit stop is what messed him up. And I'm, I'm trying to get all my emotions, you know what I'm saying, Good to myself. First of all, first of all, let me let me say this real quick. Cause I know this might be a little bit of a video, but let me say this real quick. Uh, I spent what? I spent sixty dollars on YouTube TV. Cause y'all gotta realize something, right? I don't have no cable. I have internet. That's it. I have no cable. Yes, I got all this tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment and stuff like that. Thirty around. My, I got all this stuff, but I have no cable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's crazy, bro. Yes, yes, it is crazy. So. I thought I was gonna be able to watch a free live stream and stuff like that. I couldn't find it, you know what I'm saying? So what I did was, you know, I went and got a YouTube TV real quick, you know what I'm saying? You know, the trial version and stuff like that or whatever the case may be. And hey, as soon as the race was over, I canceled my trial version, you feel me? But I must say, man, this race right here, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I have no notes. I'm gonna be a little bit of, you know, back and forth and stuff like that, but I'm gonna try to keep everything in order. This race right here is probably going to go down as the third most boringest race of all time when it comes to Daytona 500s. The first will be the 2000 Daytona 500. Boring. 
The second will be the 2013 Daytona 500. They race on the high side of the whole, like a, like a choo-choo train, just choo-choo-choo-choo, and just race on the high side of the whole race. Boring. This right here is pretty much the 2013 Daytona 500 again. You feel me? Now, let's give a little bit of recap real quick. Um, the race started off, you know what I'm saying, right on time and stuff like that. Uh, rain was in the air, um, threatening weathers and stuff like that. Uh, a big wreck came out on lap 14 or 15 that took out a lot of good contenders and stuff like that. Um, from that wreck right there, uh, it started raining. Uh, the race got red flagged and uh, it was a postponed of the race for over five hours. Uh, the race was able to uh, get the track dry and stuff like that and uh, continue where we was able to finish the whole 200 last 500 miles um but the overall race itself besides that last lap the overall race itself was pretty much it was pretty much a snooze fest i, I must say that's just my opinion it was pretty much a snooze fest um you know I, of course at first it's been a five hour rain delay you know drivers want to you know stretch their legs real quick, you know, trying to get settled in and stuff like that. I understand, you know, you, you take it easy and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? But the whole race, each stage, until at least the last lap of the stage, was just single file racing on the high side, the whole race. A lot of people's gonna say that, hey, this race right here is 2013 all over again. I know a lot of people's gonna say this. You feel me? But I must say, I've seen some things that I haven't seen in a long time at Daytona. Green flag pit stops. I liked it. I like that. It, it, it mixed it up. It's, it's so rare, especially with the stage racing and stuff like that. It's so rare to see green flag pit stops, not just at Daytona and Talladega, but at any track. It's so rare to see that because not only you have cautions for debris or wreck cars or whatever, but you have cautions for stage racing. I've been saying this since stage racing started. They shouldn't have, they shouldn't throw out no caution for stage racing. Whoever leads that lap of that stage of, of race, like stage one is lap 60 or whatever, 65 or whatever, whoever leads that lap, they get their points and let them boys keep on going. That's how I feel about it. It shouldn't be no, oh, we just gonna race to the stage, we're gonna race to the stage, we're gonna race to the stage, it's gonna be a caution. You, you, you shouldn't even have a determined factor in these drivers' head, man. You should let them just keep on going, but that's for another video right there. But, you know, besides of those two current events right there the race pretty much was just green flag racing and we was able to get one um green flag pit stop towards the end and stuff like that to really mix it up like i said demi hamlin he won stage one he won stage two he looked like once again he was gonna be a shoe in to win the whole event you feel me but when the Toyotas went to pit road and when they did they pit stops and stuff like that, they were so spread out that the lead pack cars, you know what I'm saying, just passed by them, you know, and, and, and from there we never seen Denny Hammond again. We never seen them again. Um, the Fours, they when they came down to pit road, they was able to boom by the beam, get out together, race together, boom, pass right pile. Same thing with the Chevrolets, you know, they was just able to stay together and pass right by. The Toyotas, when they went down there, they wasn't, they wasn't synced up, they wasn't lined up, you know, and it showed once they came back onto the racetrack trying to get up to speed, the main pack was just able to steamroll right past them, and not a single Toyota was able to see the front of the pack no more for the rest of the race. But, I must say, if cautions and stuff like that would have played out how it should have been played out, but it didn't, that was Denny, that was Denny Hamlin's race to lose right there. You know what I'm saying? That was his race to lose. But... I can't, I can't be mad at it. I can't be mad at it. Because that's the nature of Daytona and Talladega. When it comes to restricted plate racing, anybody has a chance to win. Why do you think when it comes to uh, uh, me playing the game on, online, when I code on uh, line with y'all and stuff like that, live stream and stuff like that, everybody race Daytona and Talladega because anybody has a chance to win. You don't... There's no such thing as a fast car. There's no such thing as... You know, you 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 need people to help you. You need to be in the draft. It's a, it's a strategic type of a game. It's like a mental type of game. It's like high speed chess going on. You need people to help you for you to win the race. It's no, I'm just gonna do it by myself like how you do it at other tracks. You need people to help you. That's why anybody can win because everybody has the equal performance of power. Once you win the draft, everybody is equal. That's the ultimate equalizer. So I must say, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy that 
it's somebody new won the race. You know what I'm saying? For a second, we thought that uh, <clears throat> Chase Elliott had won the race. And I'm sure that would have right there uh, went real good with the crowd. Um, you know, he just came off of winning his championship last year. So for him to come back uh, the pre the next year and win the Daytona 500, I'm sure that would have did real good with the crowd and stuff like that because he is the fan favorite. But I think what NASCAR did because it was a wreck on the last lap. <coughs> Excuse me, that's wrong. <laughs> I'm just playing with y'all. But I believe what NASCAR did was when that wreck uh, transpired, they pretty much threw the caution out right then and there. And of course, Michael McDowell was already in front. Soon as they threw the caution out, he was already in front. It was no question asked. He was already in front. So I I'm happy that somebody knew, somebody that we'll never hear about. You know what I'm saying? Because Michael McDowell, he's a good driver. He's been around for a while. But he's not a guy that week in and week out, he's, you know what I'm saying, contending for wins. He's not. He's not one of those guys. I'm, I'm sorry. It has nothing to do with him per se. It could be with the equipment. You know, it, it, there's a whole bunch of factors that goes with that. But he is not one of those guys that's week in and week out that's contending for wins. So I'm happy that somebody knew won the race. I'm happy that, you know what I'm saying, it was a driver that been around for a while and finally got their first victory. I'm happy for that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it could easily win either or. NASCAR could have played either way. They could have gave it to Malcolm McDowell, which they did, or gave it to Chase Elliott. Either way, I think it would have been, for the most part, suitable for the fans. But just the overall race itself, oh my gosh. Now, with all that being said, right, and y'all gotta realize something, man, I, I, I've, been, I've been drinking a lot of Coca-Cola and stuff like that, man, so y'all gotta excuse me, man. Huh, yeah, this video is sponsored by Coca-Cola, you feel me? But with all that being said, the one person that a lot of people thought that would have had a real breakout race tonight was Bubba Wallace. And for the most part, Bubba Wallace was up there. He was up there the whole race. Kept his nose clean, he was up there for the whole race. Laid a couple laps here and there and stuff like that. Stayed with the top five and stuff like that. He had a good car. Got caught up with the wreck with that last lap and stuff like that, or whatever the case may be. But an overall race, this right here, look, I'm gonna say this. This speed, well, I can't even say speed weeks. This speed couple of days has been the most successful when it comes to Bubba Wallace. For the longest, Bubba Wallace has been in the NASCAR and the top sport of NASCAR, the Monster Energy Series, for the last couple of years now. But he hasn't been in, you know what I'm saying, equal amount of equipment. He's been over there at, you know, Richard, uh, Richard Petty's uh, uh, team and stuff like that. And they're not the, you know, when it comes to equipment wise, they're not the best of the best. You feel me? You know, he was always somewhat of a, a sub, you know, 25th to like 15th type of, you know what I'm saying, finisher. Every once in a while, he might crap the top 10 or whatever the case may be. But that 15th to like 25, that was like his sweet spot where he usually finished. I feel like this year with Michael Jordan, because the team that he's with is a Michael Jordan team. It's Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin. I feel like this year right here is going to show how good Bubba Wallace truly is. This right here is gonna make or break Bubba Wallace in his year right here with this team that he got. He pretty much got the same equipment that Denny Hamlin got, that Kyle Busch got. Those are always competitive cars week in and week out. So he has competitive equipment, he has great equipment. This right here has to be Bubba Wallace year. And I'm not saying that he has to win a championship or anything like that, but he needs a victory. He needs a victory, you feel me? So. I must say, besides of the wreck, tonight, Bubba Wallace, his car was up there. He was leading laps. He was up there in the top five, top ten for the most part of the race. I feel like Bubba Wallace got some good equipment this year, and he should do pretty good this year, hopefully. This is just the first race. We got 35 more to go. You know, the season don't end until November. Yes, NASCAR is long. You feel me? Now, also, also, let me also say this, too, as well. The commentators... Jeff Gordon and man, man, first of all, y'all know Jeff Gordon is my favorite race car driver of all the time. You know what I'm saying? But Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer, oh my gosh. Can, can, can we please agree that those two right there are a, perf a perfect duo? Like, Clint Boyer is pretty much replacing DW. Like, I never, I never in my life since like DW has left. I never in my life laughed at what the commentators were saying. I mean, I love Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon's my favorite driver, so you know I'm gonna show a little bit more 
lead you towards him and stuff like that. You know, I might laugh at a joke that's truly not funny, but I'm about to just laugh at because I love Jeff Gordon. But I must say, Clint Boyer coming to the broadcast is a breath of fresh air. I feel like Clint Boyer is going to go down in history as one of the best broadcasters for NASCAR in recent times. I mean, the, the guy is his ultimate funny, man. Like, he's a comedian. He always been like this. Even when he was a driver compete, uh, competing and stuff like that, he always had slick remarks, funny quotes, funny comments. The guy is overall funny, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to uh, Missouri and stuff like that. That's where he's coming from. But the guy is just overall funny, man. And I must say, this race right here, and not just this race right here, but the other races I've seen where he was someone helping out or whatever the case may be, the guy is just hilarious, man. I mean, the, the whole race, as I'm watching it, you know what I'm saying? Because the race was being born. Because, like I said, they just racing on the high line and stuff like that. The race was being born. But he brought so much energy, so much laughter. Anytime that they talk about a sponsor, anytime that they talk about the cars, anytime that they talk about the weather, whatever they was talking about, he was able to put his little five cents in there, spice it up a little bit, stir it up a little bit, and make you have a smile on your face. Clint Boyer has a great career at being a broadcaster. I'm telling you, man, like, Clint Boyer is funny, man. Like, man, I, I was having so much fun. Just, I, I was like, man, every time they started talking, man, I was like, I can't wait to see what Clint Boyer got to say. And not only with that, but I feel like the camaraderie with uh, Clint Boyer, Jeff Gordon, and, oh, my God, I, this guy's been on TV for so long, but I forgot his name right now. Is it is it Larry? I forgot his name right now. But I feel like their overall camaraderie with each other they meshed good to with each other they're able to you know what I'm saying lead each other into jokes they're able to lead each other into uh, new segments they're able to lead each other into new uh topics they fit in good with each other they fit in real good with each other you know what i'm saying like i'm not gonna lie to you when dw left i told myself like man because you gotta realize when fox shows nascar and you got DW. If you ain't never seen no race with DW being on, <laughs> being on TV, man, like DW is funny. He is funny. And when he left and I knew he was about to leave, I'm like, dang, who, who can they replace him with? Like, you can't replace him with somebody that's dry. I mean, like I said, I love Jeff Gordon, but he's not. He's funny. He has his funny moments. He has his funny little remarks, but he's not just overall just, man, you, what Jeff Gordon going to say next? You know, he's, he's just not one of those individuals. But Clint Boyer is one of those individuals because you don't know what Clint Boyer is about to say. Like, he just, his, 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 his man, I'm telling you, man, his overall, you know what I'm saying, entertainment value is just everywhere, man. You don't know what's about to come out of his mouth. And I'm telling you, Fox, y'all did a good job of letting Clint Boyer come on the team, come on the roster. I'm telling y'all, that was the best move that y'all could make right there, man. Because that guy right there is just overall just funny. He's entertaining. And he's going to give a lot of more you know what I'm saying? Relief to a race. Because I'm not going to lie to y'all. This race that we just watched, the 2021 Daytona 500, was boring. Yes, it was boring. They went over 120 some laps just pacing. Lined up together. No three ride racing. No, not even two wide. Just lined up. Choo choo train. The whole race. The most exciting things that happened in the race was lap 14 when they wrecked. I can't even say the rain delay was exciting because that's not exciting because we knew we was going to be in it for the long haul. The restart of the race was exciting because now we know we're going to get back on the way. And also, the wreck that happened on the... No, I'll take it back. The pit stops. The pit stops were exciting. That, that was exciting because it mixed it up. It mixed it up. It mixed it up. And the last lap, when they wrecked, that was like the only exciting factors that happened in the race. The rest of the race was just a snooze fest. Like, bro, I was sitting right here the whole time, bro, watching it, right? And I'm just like this. I'm, I'm just like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it was that type of race, man. And this is another thing I got to say, too, as well, right? How many Daytona 500s has it been now since, let's just say since 2000? How many Daytona 500 has it been since 2000 where either the race was shortened, the race was rain delay? Like, how many Daytona 500 has it been now? Like, just off the top of my head, I can think of the 2003 race. Race short because of rain. Uh, Michael Watcher won. Then you go to like what? Uh, you go to like 2009. Uh, 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 race short. Uh, Matt Kinsel win. Then you go to like 2000 and you go to 2012. 
the race was ne the race never got started. They had a race the next day, on Monday, uh, 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 Monday night. You know what I'm saying? Then then you go to like what what what, like like 2000. I, I can't even think of the other one. I know I know it's like two more. Like how many Daytona 500 has it been, where the race has either been rain delayed or race shortened? Like I'm I'm starting to think, and this is just my opinion, but I'm starting to think that. I don't, I don't think February is a good year for NASCAR to be in Florida. Like, you know how certain spots of America has their, you know, tropical weather seasons and stuff like that, whatever the case may be. You know, I'm, I'm starting to think, like, February in Florida is not a good time, man. Because how many Daytona 500s has been rain delayed or just race shortened, man, because of weather? Like, I'm, I'm really starting to think that. Man, unless it's just me overthinking it and, you know, NASCAR just got that much of bad luck. But I'm really starting to think that NASCAR in Daytona in February, it's not, it's not, it's not a good, it's not a good time, man. Because it's, it's always someone when it comes to the race. I don't know, do they got to push it up more or maybe push it back a little bit? Like, they already said that they're going to shorten up the season somewhat and try to make the season finish, you know what I'm saying, either the first week of November or almost in October, the last week of October. Like, I'm starting to think, like, maybe, maybe it's got to push it back just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know it's tradition, but push it back into March. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you almost got to start pushing it back towards March because that mid-February where we always race between, you know, the, the, the 13th and the 22nd where we always race the Daytona 500, it's always something with the weather. It's always something. It's always something. Like, I, 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 I don't get it when it comes to that. But we was able to at least finish the race tonight. We didn't have to wait until tomorrow or nothing like that. We was able to finish the race tonight. And the winner of the race is Michael McDowell. And I must say, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. That's what's up. Um, hopefully this right here, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, help him out. Uh, be able to get me, you know, possibly some more victories and stuff like that. Like I said, he's not a contender of every weekend and stuff like that. Uh, he's one of those guys that, you know, Daytona Talladega, restrict the play race and that's gonna be his like you know shoe print and stuff like that but he's able to win the daytona 500 can't nobody take that away from him his career can go however it wants to go but you always gonna know that he is a daytona 500 champion and you gotta give uh, congrats to that though so that's the only thing that i am happy about that it was somebody new somebody fresh uh, somebody that you will never hear about, you know what I'm saying, win the day 2500. I, I like them underdog stories. I love those underdog stories, you know what I'm saying? But just the overall race itself, though, oh, my gosh. The overall race itself, man, was just lackluster, man. I mean, it, it wasn't that fun, man. I mean, I think only what? I think only 15 cars was on the lead lap at the end. Like, it, 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 it wasn't that good. It was not that good. I mean, oh, man, I mean, Last year was good, but, you know, with the things that happened with last year and stuff like that with Ryan Newman. And let me also say this, too, as well. That last lap wreck, uh, at first, because you even heard the commentators and stuff like that, Jeff Gordon on them say, man, everybody got out the car on their own power. Because that last lap wreck, if y'all seen how Kyle Bush hit that wall and how... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brad Kowalski, uh car went up to the fence a little bit and stuff like that. It looked kind of violent. It looked kind of violent. Now, y'all got to realize something. At Daytona Tyler Dagger, they're doing 190, 195 the whole time. The whole time. There's no slowdowns in the corners. This is wide open. 195, 190 the whole time. Packed up together. 43, well, 40 cars. Well, 15 cars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But back in the day, you know, it'd be more. But it was, but it was a wreck, though. But. You get the judice though, man. You're packed up together with other cars though. And that last lap wreck, especially after what happened last year with Ryan Newman, you know, when they seen that wreck, especially when you seen how Kyle Busch kind of got out of the car kind of slowly and stuff like that, it was like, don't tell them that we got a repeat of last year, you know, because what happened last year was a freak accident. And I'm sure NASCAR don't want that type of image no more. I mean, you got to realize something. When it comes to, and it's so crazy, it always, it's crazy that it always comes from Daytona. Now, for all my people out there that don't know about NASCAR, Daytona is a fast racetrack, it's a restricted plate racetrack, but it's not no Talladega where, Talladega is, is bigger, it's wider, it's longer, it's faster. 
these type of accidents don't happen at Talladega. You will think these type of accidents will happen at Talladega. They do not happen at Talladega where the speeds are faster, the cars are going faster, the track is bigger, the track is wider. So not only are they doing three wide racing, but they're doing four and five wide racing. You'll think freak stuff like this will happen at that track. Nah, it always happened at Daytona. From the Earnhardt, from, uh, uh, what's my man's name? Uh, 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 the Dylan Boy back in 15. Uh, Ryan Newman back in 2020 like it's always freak crazy acts uh, accidents happening at Daytona I don't know what it is about that track man like Daytona Man Daytona that's a bad girl right there man. You know what I'm saying but that wreck right there um, Had a lot of people you know say on the edge real quick and you know say everybody was real happy that you know say everybody was able to get out the car on their own power uh, and walk away from the accident stuff like that Cause when you first look at the wreck it's like Ooh, wow you know what i'm saying like it was real freaky at first though but man just salute to nascar salute to these tracks salute to these people that own these tracks that the cars are safer the cars every year are getting safer and better next year we got a whole new revamped car that's coming out and stuff like that Everything is getting more safer when it comes to into the car, the cockpit, and how the drivers are strapped in. The tracks are safer than ever. Not only they got the safer barrier going around the corner and stuff like that, but now at all tracks, they got the safer barrier going around the whole complete track. The inside too as well. Like, it's so much safety has been going on with NASCAR within the last 20 years. It will blow your mind. Look at the race of NASCAR back in 2001 and look at the race of NASCAR to this day. And see how much safety innovation has gone into nascar like these cars are so safe that it has to be some type of freak accident for something to happen where and it is not even killing nobody where somebody gets badly injured you know what i'm saying because we haven't had a death in nascar since 2001. no disrespect to indie cars and stuff like that you know i, I watch the indie car here and there I, I like indie cars but even with indie cars they didn't have tragedy within recent years and stuff like that like but that's a whole different series that's a whole different sport that's a whole different everything but i'm just saying like just the leaps and face and bounds that nascar takes is it's incredible you look at all the other racing series that's out there in the world and stuff like that and they have their little deaths here and there and stuff like that or what the case may be but when it comes to nascar though we haven't had one in nascar since 2001 with Dale Earnhardt Sr. And that right there should just give you, you know, saying the gratitude that how safe and how much safety they put into their sport. Safety is number one, safety is key. And I can't do nothing but salute them for that. You know what I'm saying? Cause that right there, at first I'm like, Ugh! you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh Lord, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause just how Kyle Busch went into the wall like that, it looked kind of, it looked kind of sketchy. If you can remember back in 2015, back in the Bush series, or nationwide, I should say, he had a wreck too as well, where you know he, he was out for a couple months. So uh, when he had his car just veer, you know what I'm saying, veer left like that or veer right like that, it was like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? But he was able to walk out on his own power. That's just show you, man, just how much safety did this car gets, man. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, though, um, I'm pretty much gonna wrap this up, man. Cause I think I didn't talk to y'all here enough. I gave y'all about 30 minutes worth of uh, coverage. This is pretty much my review of the 2021 Daytona 500. Now, like I said, I have recently gained uh, support and subscribers and views when it comes to NASCAR and stuff like that. Um, I might somewhat incorporate, you know what I'm saying, you know, once a week or whatever the case may be, depending on how much of the demand is, you know, give y'all a video talking about nascar and stuff like that because like i said nascar is my favorite sport this is the sport that i grew up on now don't don't get me don't get me confused with how i be acting when i'm online and racing on heat five and stuff like that you gotta realize something that's for entertainment value you feel me that's not me per se that's for entertainment value you know what i'm saying i have to be entertaining so don't get butt hurt if you watch one of my videos after you watch this video right here I'm like oh fly guy seems like a real cool guy then you go watch one of my live streams while i'm racing nascar you hear me wait man wait 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 that's just being entertaining that's all it is man like nothing else about it man you feel me but if the video do good and stuff like that man i'll, I'll somewhat you know what I'm saying keep up 
you know what I'm saying, with the NASCAR uh, topics and stuff like that. So, it, it all has to do with y'all, man. So, make sure you give it a thumbs up, like the video, share this bad boy for it to be shown to everybody and stuff like that. But that's pretty much my review of the 2021 Daytona 500. Yes, it was a snooze fest. Yes, it was a long race. Hours, rain delay, all this stuff, blase, blase. But yet, we was able to finish it. And at the end of the day, Michael Medal has been crowned the champion of the Daytona 500. And rightfully so. I feel like he I feel like he deserved it. He seemed like a cool guy. He seemed like a cool type of individual. You know, he always, you know, even in his uh, interview, you know, God first, God first, you know, bless, you know, he seemed like he's real homebound and i like that i like that about him you know what i'm saying never really heard too much about him I, I knew about him but never heard too much of him talking and stuff like that but he seemed like his 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 energy and his overall you know say happiness was genuine you know what i'm saying and like i said he kept on saying a lot of god first god first god first y'all know i'm a god fearing person i can't do enough about respect and honor that so shout out to michael bedow um uh, if y'all want to see more videos of me and stuff like that, I also got a reaction page too as well. Uh, Fly, uh, Fly Guy Only 773 Reactions. That's on a whole different page and stuff like that. Just type that in. I do reactions over there, you know, music and stuff like that. So if y'all like stuff like that, y'all probably won't. But just throwing it out there. Uh, also, I got a gaming page too as well. Uh, Fly Guy, Fly Guy Only 773 Gaming. Uh, slowly but surely, I'm gonna start uh, incorporating. Um, my gaming videos that I do on this page over to that page, but just give it some time though. I mean, I'm only a one person army. I only can work it so fast and stuff like that. But I just had to put this video out there, man. Definitely had to give y'all a video real quick, man. You know what I'm saying? Just got done watching the Daytona 500. Shout out to Michael Bedow. And other than that, man, peace, love, and blessings to everybody, man. I know it's late in the morning. Well, early in the morning, I should say. You know, hey, it is what it is. The race got finished. It got finished today. Uh, happy Valentine's Day days to everybody and stuff like that. All the couples, whatever the case may be. And um, I'm pretty much gone, though, man. Peace, love, and blessings, man. I'm gone, man. Holler me in the next video. Let's get it.